Having worked for over a year with Gordon and observed at close quarters his determination, professionalism, and manage management expertise gained from a, a career in high-level banking, I am confident we now have the management structure in place to make the required changes. Along with the operational review, Gordon is installing a culture of constant improvement with adherence to health and safety guidelines and protocols being of paramount importance. As our EPOS system became fully operational, we dramatically improved our financial governance with the introduction of SAGE accounting, moving away from a paper-based system with its inherent shortcomings and limitations. This allowed us the ability to monitor all I center activities, to make evidence-based changes and work up proposals for consultation with members and stakeholders. One of the most challenging reviews was how to maximize income from our core activities whilst improving the experience for our members and customers. Taking the lead, I was ably assisted by our CEO, Gordon Barron, and Director, Alistair Cruikshank. The first step in the process was consultation with representatives from all three sports. The board engaged and received presentation from both the Curling Development Group and the Ice Hockey Clubs, outlining their requirements and aspirations. As we were unable to secure input from the skating fraternity, we engaged with officials and professionals from British Skating. The second step was to look outward and seek ideas and inspiration from ice centres around Scotland and England. From Elgin to Kelso, from Forfar to Blackpool, we visited over a dozen facilities, meeting owner operators and managers, professionals and stakeholders, which provided us with a raft of new ideas and activities for maximising ice usage and increasing participation. This enabled us to work up new schedules and activities which not only protected curling, but by more efficient use of the available ice time, provide more opportunities for skating and ice hockey. The proposed new timetables and schedules should, in the fullness of time, generate a significant increase in income. All proposals will go out for consultation and the revised schedules presented to the board for discussion and ratification. I would now like to turn to the challenges presented by the coronavirus pandemic. We went into lockdown. Right. Okay. As soon as we went into lo lockdown, a reopening committee was formed and Brenda McIntyre tasked with leading it. The committee had given her a brief to integrate the guidelines from all three sports into a bespoke plan for the safe reopening of the ice centre. In addition, as active members of the Scottish Ice Rink Association, SIRA, chaired by the dynamic Mike Ferguson, owner of Forfar Ice Rink, we have a forum to discuss with members from Scotland and England all aspects of reopening. Communications has always been a weakness, and to address said shortcomings, a communications committee was formed. The committee, chaired by James McRae, has been given a remit to improve interaction and communications with our users and members, and to review and make recommendations regarding the membership scheme. It's hard to believe that it's now over 11 years since I had, I had the idea for Strictly and pitched it to the wonderful Highland Hospice. I always knew that with the appropriate partner, its multiple revenue streams would provide a substantial boost to the finances of both organizations. As of last year, Strictly Inverness was the largest single fundraising event for Highland Hospice, generating a clear profit of over 320,000, split equally between the two charities. To put this in context for the ICE Centre, the 160,000 raised surpasses the 129,000 of revenue from Carling. Whilst the cancellation of Strictly 
2020 is a massive disappointment to both organizations and participants. It is scheduled to return in May 2021. However, whilst the loss of Strictly for 2020 is a massive blow to the ICE Centre finances, we have received 48,300 in grants. Staff are furloughed and the plant is switched off, saving us between seven and a half and eight thousand pounds per month. In addition, we have a healthy bank balance with very few outgoings. I would take this opportunity to thank my board of directors for all their hard work and enthusiasm, plus their unwavering commitment to overcoming the challenges presented by the current emergency. In addition, I'd like to put on record our thanks to Keith, Amanda and Graham for all their hard work and commitment during both the lockdown and weeks when they are rostered to work. As we chart a course through troubled waters, we have many advantages. We are in a strong financial position with clear direction and governance. We have a well-motivated workforce adhering to strict protocols and procedures overseen by a capable and talented board and managed by an outstanding CEO. The structures in place will ensure that the ICE Centre continues to provide a safe environment where everyone can, can participate and enjoy their respective sports. However, it's from our members and users that we draw our greatest strength. Together, the love of the roaring game, the enthusiasm and can-do approach of the ice hockey family, and the rising tide of skating with its useful diaspora places us in good stead to weather the storm. Thank you. Right. Okay, we move on uh, to the election of directors. Now, we've received no new nominate, no nominations for new... I'm a wee bit dry at the moment. We have received no nominations for new directors, uh, and none of the current directors have to stand down. Uh, the, 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 most of the directors have been either one year or a two year tenure, and it's a three year cycle. Now, whilst I'm very happy with the current board, we do need more directors. Uh, we need representation from skating. That's a real must. We must increase diversity. Brenda is the only uh, lady on the board. Uh, and we're looking for, for folk with some real specific skill sets round about IT and communications. So if people would like to apply, uh, make contact with Gordon, uh, phone him, um, email him drop my short CV and we can uh, process it from there. So uh, we now move on to the uh, interactive part of the evening and that's AOCB. And Gordon, have we received any points that have been raised or is there uh, any other matters that have been brought to attention under AOCB? No, nothing's come up. But just for the record and the apologies, the apologies was from Ron Winton with a Y, President of the Highland Wheelchairs. So there's no questions in the chat so far. Okay. Right. Okay, so if there's no other competent business, is there no other points anybody would like to raise? Yes. So, Cassandra. It, it's not competent to the AGM, but can I make an appeal for entries for the Henderson Bishop, for the ladies' competition, please? <laughs> so to the ladies that are on a screen just now, can you please make a real efforts to enter this competition? At the moment, we've only got two teams entered um, for the playdowns in Inverness. And I would suggest that if we don't get any more, we'll have to go to Perth or to Aberdeen to play. Well done, Sandra. Absolutely. Uh, anybody else wish to take an opportunity to raise a sort of commercial point, um, to promote anything? Is there, is there anybody who wants to make a similar? You can't make the number was now. What's the problem? Oh, no, fine. The number now will be. Well, you'll have to go to his email. 
Mm. Right, you should have had that. Mm. Annoyingly, really, because you. Hi, is saying. somebody trying to raise a point or ask a question? I got Finlay from your award. No, I'm just, I'm just, just got on. Oh, hi, hi, right. Finlay. Yeah, had a job getting into it. All right, okay. missed it. Uh, no, you're just having a problem too. Okay, the floor is yours, Finlay. <laughs> what I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, wait till, wait till October. <laughs> okay. Not the normal. Absolutely. Well, hopefully, absolutely. That's what we're, we're aiming for. Uh, yeah. Are we going for three sheets? Is that your planning three sheets? Was it? Well, you know, th those uh, decisions will be uh, made nearer the time, uh, but you can rest assured that uh, we'll, okay. be follow we'll follow the guidelines and everybody will be told well in advance. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. right, Finlay, um, I, I, think, I didn't think you were on the question and answer uh, session on Monday, and uh, uh, that's been recorded, and as I said earlier, uh, it's a huge file, but uh, the intention is to get it posted to the, the website and you can hear all the dialogue. Um, a lot of the scenarios were talked through um, with regard to the number of sheets of ice, the safe return to all the sports, um, um, what the, the, the considerations with regard to bond spiels, etc. So a lot of debate was that on Monday and, and we're happy to discuss again, um, but uh, that, that'll be posted to the website in due course. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was mentioning to Brenda there last week about the, if we use the downstairs bar for people in the first session, and use that, then the second session can go upstairs and watch the bit of the Caroline. I don't Brenda mentioned that to you at all. Well, Brent, Brenda's in charge, uh, Finlay, of, of the, the opening committee, and she'll be the person who'll yeah. be bringing all these proposals together, so yeah, she'll yeah. be the right person. Uh, yeah. But, you know, speak to any director with any, you know, suggestions, ideas you have, because uh, well, we get guidelines from Scottish Carling and the other disciplines get from their respective bodies. Uh, you know, from the grassroots, you'll get common sense ideas and, you know, everybody will miss something, something along the lines and somebody will point it out. So, you know, we need this sort of interaction and suggestions because uh, mm -hmm. every, every little piece of information they got is invaluable. Invaluable. But as I say, as Gordon said, that you possibly missed uh, Monday night's uh, Q&A. We're planning having these on a, a very regular basis, uh, and certainly as we approach reopening. Uh, if communications had been an issue before, uh, I'd like to think there'll come the time you say, oh God, it's that lot from the, the ice rink again. Um, we, we, will, we will get your the feedback from yourselves and we will communicate exactly what's happening as soon as we make decisions uh, yeah. and that phase return to curling. So, um, okay. Yeah. Um, Mike. Yeah. Ewan. Yeah, you, you mentioned there about a uh, proposed new schedule and timetable. Um, how are you, are you, are you planning on sharing that in some forum? And when's that coming out? Well, it, 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 the big move is we haven't got time. We're not changing ice times or, or per se as that, Ewan. That, that's not going to happen. Uh, you know, we'll have to see what in intervals there are between uh, what we're advised, between timings, between sessions and various things like that, and that'll dictate what we're doing there. Uh, what we're talking about is trying to free up uh, more Friday nights for skating discos, because it makes no sense to have, uh, if we'd an earnshire bond spiel every Saturday, uh, we probably wouldn't need uh, Strictly which the nurture bond school raises four or 5,000 on the day. Uh, but some of the bond schools raise very small amounts of money, one or two of them, and we're looking at maybe moving them away from a, a Saturday morning or, or something like that. And that's a, a consultation we're going to meet with Richard and the province representatives to discuss. Because if we can get the skating discos on a regular basis, uh, that can generate an awful lot of income from a Friday, which is, is pretty dormant. And we've got to try and get new revenue streams uh, and it works elsewhere with places with similar populations and diasporas uh, to ourselves. So these are sort of proven winners. Um, so that's where we're going to try and raise more income on it on the Friday night, but not, you know, cause the demise or, or prejudice too many of the carving bond spills. It's just maybe consolidation of, of one or two of these Saturdays. But Ali Cruikshank's worked out a schedule and 
you know, that's where we're, we're going back to, to, to discuss it uh, with the province representatives and, and Richard from Area 13. The, an advice schedule, you mean, in respect of coping with uh, COVID and the return to operating, not, not going forward? Well, sorry, I was meaning the schedule as in the actual activities that will be happening, the timings uh, on the ice. Uh, the guidelines for how we're actually going to reopen uh, is, is Brenda's remit, which will be worked out with the various bodies and uh, come back to ourselves for publication out to our members way ahead of, of, of reopening. I think it's a point that I spoke about quite a lot when I was involved, as you know, the timings and the session times. And I, I think it's an element that does need reviewed. Yes. The, the session times. I've made this point in quite a few times myself when I was on the board. I think it's a, an important element that needs to be addressed at some point because I think it possibly the timings just now is being a bit detrimental to development and retaining people. Absolutely. The, the, these late night sessions, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're not. They're, 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 you're hemorrhaging members uh, with this. A, a lot of folks say, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe sub for you, but I'm not doing it if it's late. Uh, we'll have to address that as well. But th that will be in one of the forums going forward. You and we'll put that out for discussion, uh, which I think in the, the, this Zoom is wonderful because it, it's, we can poll members, we can do various things which have not been particularly su successful with the feedback because we don't have the database and it's that lack of communication uh, which we're trying to overcome. But I think Zoom, and we'll, we'll certainly put that on the schedule uh, for one of the Zoom meetings, ice times, because uh, it'd be very good to get everybody to have a forum where folk can all put their points of view forward. But I totally agree with you. It, it does need to be looked at and changed. Uh, I would like to, to add as, as well, Ewan, um, Michael made reference to the visits uh, that um, were made to ice centres across Scotland and some in England as well. And looking at the best practices, and ice time was very much part of that, is making most of uh, the weekend and, and, and ice skating forms a large part of that as well. So we're not just kind of knee-jerk reaction uh, reacting now to the COVID uh, uh, virus, but looking at, well, actually, how do we maximise ice time, making it uh, um, sustainable and, uh, and, and the best use for the curlers, whilst also making most use of the weekends. Um, there's a question that I'd missed in my apologies um, uh, to, to Richard McKenzie on, on Monday. He said, well, actually, how does that affect, if there's discos on a, on a Friday night, how does that uh, affect the bond spiel on a Saturday? Um, well, the, the reality is that there, there will be a level of compromise, however, where there's a, a weekend schedule more with the, the skating and the ice hockey, those weekends won't be curling. And where there's the bond spiels, uh, they'll be set aside as the bean uh, for, the, for the bond spiel. And, that, and as you say, Ewan, is uh, everything is uh, for review or was for review uh, with regard to the timings Monday to Friday. But with COVID-19, obviously that's very much brought it ahead anyway. You should mute. You yeah. mute. We, we made no knee-jerk changes. When, when I took over, I said, well, we'll, we'll just actually, even as a scientist, everything's got to be evidence-based. So we've got the systems in place, we've now got the information, and as I said, we can look and we can monitor things and say, well, this doesn't stack up, why are we doing this, why are we doing this? Uh, but it's all very well to do that in black and white with a, figure, a table of figures in front of you. Uh, we have to engage with people and to, to discuss with them you know, what, what we want to do and reach a compromise. Uh, but there's no getting away from the fact that we need to increase our income quite dramatically. And we've pretty much maxed out uh, the curling income. Uh, I think where the real growth is going to come from is in ice skating. So we've got to give it, uh, we've got to give it an opportunity to flourish, uh, to protect the whole of the ice rink. Uh, but you know, curling is still our, our main uh, money spend apart from Strictly. Uh, so you know, it, it's going to, have a vital part, obviously, you uh, during the week. Yeah. So, but as I say, we, we've got ideas, proposals, and we're just going out to the various provinces and areas to, to, to run it past them. I don't know if MD is keeping an eye in the chat, but I'll, I'll read a comment from Stephen Rankin. Uh, it's addressed it to everybody. The COVID environment is changing weekly, if not daily. Patience is the watchword for now. We must make sure we do all that we can to stop a second wave and follow the guidelines. And I think 
and that, that's kind of wise words indeed, and that very much was uh, coming through from our discussions on Monday. And uh, the next point was Sandra, uh, please be very careful about holding skating discos every Friday, or you will land with this problem that Murray has in that we cannot have bones field. And my response to that is, no, it's always scheduled in. It's not going from uh, um, one extreme to the other, up where it's all curling safe to then all skating. No, it's looking at, as, as Michael um, already alluded to, the, 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 the bigger bond spiels there, and we know they're well supported, and perhaps looking at some of the others, or they, could they be put together, could be reschedules done a different way. And just to restate the answer, it's already been uh, provided that some of the Ali Cruikshank will be picking up for each of the different provinces and clubs to make sure um, that um, the needs are catered for. And along mm. the way, there needs to be a level of compromise, I guess. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Gordon. Um, just uh, just something else. This is more a sort of com commercial sort of question or operational. But the, the, we're kind of mindful that the tenants within our building are obviously very important and key to the incomes. W what have you done through the process to give the tenants support to help them through this process? Because it's uh, obviously key that they come out the other side in, in one piece and continue as tenants within the, within the property. There's a lot of landlords are trying to support their tenants just now. I just wonder what's been done to help them out. We're, we're doing the same, Ewan. Uh, we held a, a, a cheese and wine uh, to engage with uh, various stakeholders. We invited the staff along. Unfortunately, none of them attended. Uh, we invited all our tenants along uh, because we value our tenants very, very much. Uh, we wanted to work with them to say, well, you know, we're now on a commercial footing because we got in a professional surveyor to actually do the reviews and we're now on a commercial footing. Uh, but we're very, very uh, appreciative of our tenants. So we would like to promote them on the website, whether it's Sports Scotland, the physios, or whatever's appropriate, and work with our tenants. And they were delighted. Uh, it was a great uh, evening, and uh, it's, it, it improved our relationship, which was in many respects non-existent beforehand. So now put names, uh, faces to names, and we've got a far better uh, relationship with them. As regards where we are commercially, yes, we've acted in the best interest of our tenants. There's been reductions, uh, there's been deferments, uh, and we've uh, you know, uh, very much agreed with the request from them and we're working with them in these difficult times. So um, where it's been asked, uh, we've actually, uh, I don't want to get into too much commercial detail, but where it's been asked for, uh, then we've actually agreed to it. Um, so thanks, that's a good question. Good. Uh, good, I'm pleased to hear that, Greg. Any other questions? There's eight, as I see, coming through, Gordon, I don't. Um, uh, Stephen Rankin, on ice times, we and Murray have identified the same challenges and have this on our radar. Maybe working together and share ideas, outcomes will help each other, so we do the best for the curlers and encouraging greater use of the ice pad. I think that's a statement and a resounding yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, there's no purpose. You know, we, we saw what was going on uh, around Scotland, around in certain parts in England, uh, and we got so much from that. And we should be working a lot closer with Elgin than we are at the moment. We should be helping each other, working symbiotically. We should say, yes, we should really be helping. So, uh, Gordon, I'll task you at some stage uh, over the coming months uh, to make contact with suitable people, invite them through to Inverness as and when we can, or a Zoom meeting, uh, and just have a general chat to see how we can start the ball rolling. If but, I've got the right name, um, and my apologies if I haven't, uh, Ian Mackay had sent a proposal saying that there should be more do dialogue and more, um, uh, more interaction. I had misunderstood it. He was w wishing for that to be raised as a question on Monday. I read it as a statement. Either way, it's on our agenda for the next time we meet to look at actually how we can improve um, the, the relationship and the, the dialogue between uh, Murray and ourselves and, and the provinces. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I think it's essential in these challenging times that we do work together uh, and we'll see how that works. So, Gordon Nurse. And Sandra's got a hand up. I understood that the last area, sorry, the last. Yes, the, the last Area 13 meeting that I was at in Inverness, um, and I attended as the ladies' branch rep, um, there was a proposal that the 
five provinces and the two development groups and the ice rink um, were going to be meeting. And I don't think that has happened, or if it has happened, I haven't been invited. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure who would have responsibility for, 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 for organizing that meeting, but uh, certainly if there was a meeting, we, we would attend it, Gordon or myself would be there. Uh, so uh, Sandra, if you can look back into that and you know, facilitate well, I, that. Sandra, you've got to mute. You're on mute, Sandra. Yep. Sandra, Wait a minute. We'd be delighted to, to well, in these days you don't host it. We could, you know, we'll have a Zoom meeting or whatever you wish. If you wish to set that up, then we'd certainly attend that. Absolutely. <laughs> I, un I understood that it, that was coming from the Area 13 rep from Ian Mackay. And that's probably why Ian has sent to me. We've raised it today, today and uh, we'll. We will take that forward from now and if Ian's on the call, maybe we could initiate that and get that sorted and uh, set up off, off the call tonight. Okay. That's good. Well done, Sandra. You're on a roll tonight. This is good. Mo Simpson, Highland Field Chair Curling Club have decided to postpone this year's triples until next year. Having spoken to several of the competitors, they are not willing to come up north at the moment given the current situation. I think that's fully understandable. And uh, if my memory serves me right, Brenda, uh, the skins has been pulled for this year as well. Yeah, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think two points. This is a transition period, uh, and hopefully well, next year will be more back to normal than this year. Uh, but to reiterate the point that Stephen made, things change so quickly. Uh, they do, but there'll come a point where we just have to say, okay, this is where we're going to start uh, with the curling schedule and the ice hockey schedule and the various things, whether it's a phased return with three sheets, four sheets, whatever. Uh, but things are changing so quickly. Uh, I can understand folk not wishing to take part at, the, at these competitions at the moment, but uh, hopefully this is a transition and next year we'll be back to pretty much normal schedules or participation, I should say. Okay, there's nothing else in the chat. I'm having a look through if anybody's got their hand up or doesn't seem to. Oh. No. Any other comment or questions? No. Okay. Well, thank you uh, for attending and taking the time. It's much appreciated. And hopefully uh, we'll see most of you back for our next Q&A, uh, which we'll send out a uh, advance notice. Uh, and thank you very much and stay safe. Thank you very much.